Hey, this is Riker, and today I'm going to introduce you guys to ZMAX Optic Studio. This is uncut raw footage for you this morning in my basement, and I'm just going to upload this and hope it is beneficial to anybody out there. So, um, I've got here um, a window of ZMAX Optic Studio, a brand new lens file that's opened up. Let's go ahead and just do something together. Let's say um, we're trying to look at a, a lens singlet. So in ZMAX, um, it's not exactly intuitive where everything is when you first open this up. But if you go over here to Setup and go to System Explorer, then you'll get a whole bunch of stuff that's going to show up over here. So, um, you've got all these different options. What you're going to want to do is open up your aperture and go ahead and let's put in some value. Let's say we've got a 25 millimeter entrance aperture. And we can close that. Let's go to our fields. Um, now, let's see, we've got down here a field that is at zero, zero, so an on-axis field angle. Uh, we can go ahead and add in another field angle here, or my preference is either to open the field data editor, or you can also hit Control F on your keyboard. Okay. Here, um, you can either right-click and you can insert a field, insert a field after, or you can hit the Insert button. Um, if you want to get rid of a field, you can right-click and delete the field, or you can just hit the delete key on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and insert a field, and let's do, um, I don't know, one degree. So, close the fields, open up wavelengths, and right now our, our wavelength is at uh, 0.55 microns, 550 nanometers. We can go ahead and double click on wavelengths here, or we can also hit Control W, and that opens that up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead, and there's a whole lot of wavelength presets here that they've got in uh, as options. So let's go ahead and let's go and select this visible preset, and it automatically populates those wavelengths for me. Okay, I'm going to close that. And that's uh, all we need to do to just start setting up a lens. So we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to unpin this so that we've got a little more view. Now we're finally ready to start putting in our lens uh, information. So I've got my stop surface right here. My object starts at infinity. I'm going to go ahead and insert um, a a row here by hitting the insert key on my keyboard. Again, you can also right click and hit insert or insert after. And we're gonna go ahead and give this lens a thickness of five millimeters. And we're gonna use a nice common material, NBK7. And uh, we don't have any curvature to this lens right now. It's just a plain up, but let's go ahead and see what this looks like up here. In the Setup tab, oops, double click that. Okay, on the Setup tab, you've got Cross Section. So I'm gonna hit Cross Section View, and there we go. There is my Plano Plano lens. Now, if I want to see the Lens Data Editor and the image of my lens, the little diagram here at the same time, I simply click on this and hold down, and then drag, and that pops it out. And then you've got this, uh, um, little, I don't even know what this would be called, little thingy here in the middle of the screen. Um, and it lets you to organize your windows however you wish. You could stick it on the left, you could stick it on the right, you could put it right back in the same frame, you could stick it above, you could stick it below. I'm going to go ahead and stick it to the right. Okay, so now I can see my lens information and check it out. Um, it highlights the surface in orange that I am currently um, that's currently active in the lens data editor. I go to the second one and there you go. That second surface is now active. Now I um, want to go ahead and create some distance 
between this lens and my image plane. My image plane is right now at the exact same location as the second surface of the lens. So I can add in some thickness here. Let's go ahead and add in 50 millimeters. Now, um, I have my settings set up, so I have to update this automatically. Uh, sorry, I have to update this by clicking on the update button, but uh, your settings probably will have you update automatically. Okay. So, um, we've got light that is propagating from our lens, and you can see right here that our stop is on this surface because the light is diverging from that surface for your field points. So, uh, all the field points are lined up together. Let's go ahead and add some curvature to this, to this lens. I'm going to make it a 100 millimeter radius of curvature and it's positive and now I've got a focusing lens. Now uh, I'm not quite to the focus. I could go ahead and adjust this thickness now to let's say 100 millimeters and now I'm about halfway there. I'll adjust it to 200 millimeters and I click update and now we went just past the focus. Now ZMAX has a nice feature um, on these on the thickness column of the lens data editor where you can click on this little uh, square that is just to the right. You also have some on the radius column. Um, most of these columns have these little squares that are right next to it. So go ahead and click on that square in that uh, on that th uh, thickness of 200 millimeters and right now it tells us the solve type. If we click on this you get tons of options. Let's, uh, we're not going to go through hardly any of these. We're just going to look at marginal ray height. So marginal ray height is the paraxial solution to the equation uh, when you choose uh, the paraxial solution to the image location when you choose a pupil zone of zero. So we're going to do that. And it adjusts us back to 190. I go ahead and update. And voila, we are at the focus. And you can see we're kind of blurred a little bit, but um, that's what you would expect from a singlet. Um, let's go ahead and let's go to the Analyze tab and go to Ray Spot Diagrams and Standard Spot Diagram. And we can see that our wavelengths um, are kind of blurred out. Um, it looks like uh, red, the 656, is pretty close to... Uh, in focus, green is kind of out of focus, and blue very much so out of focus. So we could um, go ahead here and change this back to fixed, and we could diddle around with this and make this maybe 190.1 millimeters and see what happens. And it got bigger. That was the wrong way. 190. Point, no, wait a second. Let's let's keep going. 190. Did I? Okay, I was going, I was going the right way. One night, one eighty nine point nine. Let's get a little smaller. Let's let's be a little more aggressive. One eighty nine. Okay, now we go to one eighty eight, and we went through. So you see, blue is now more in focus than red. Okay, so let's go to one eighty eight point five. So. Um, if this is all you, what you had to do in order to find the best focus in ZMAX and that's the only way you could do it, that wouldn't be very interesting and useful for the software to do. Um, and so um, what you can do now is let's go ahead and do a quick optimization routine. So let's go to the Optimize tab. Now there's this nice little quick focus button. Um, let's not get deep into the optimization uh capabilities of ZMAX right now. Let's just use quick focus. And what this does is it'll adjust the last thickness and based on the criteria that you specify, let's do just spot size radial, it will minimize that. It will adjust this thickness until it's minimized for the wavelengths and the field of view that you specified. Um, so let's go ahead and just click OK. And now we're at 189.2 and let's update and look at our spot diagram. Update. And there you go. Green is now in focus. That's the middle of our wave band. Red is a little out of focus and blue is more so out of focus. 
but this is uh, showing us that this is approximately the best focus that you can get with just a regular Plano convex lens. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you for today. Thank you very much for watching.